Welcome to the third-party Transformer News for Retro Robot Radio for the date of January 31st, 2015. Bad Cube showed off uh, the uh, renders of a set of masterpiece style Insecticons. These are very show accurate versions of the Insecticons, and they do transform nicely. I'm wondering how big they end, end up being. Might end up only being Scout to small deluxe size if they try to stay with the scale charts. DMY showed off their D05 design for TFP Voyager Megatron. This is a set of add-ons for the uh, Transformer Prime Voyager Megatron. There's three different versions of it uh, for the three different versions. One's uh, the, one American version, one's the one of the chromed up versions, one's the dark version that are all available in, uh, I think there, those other two are available in Japan. But uh, they both, all three of them make a figure much more show accurate and add a lot of uh, weapons and fillers and stuff to it, so you got your three different versions of that. DMY also showed off the uh, prototype of a War Within-inspired Optimus Prime figure, and it looks like this is going to be about an ultra size, because that's next to a really tall Voyager right there. Dr. Wu showed off the package images of their new partner's head. This is a Spike and Daniel Witwicky head, that fits inside of the uh, exosuit that comes with Masterpiece Bumblebee. DX9 Toys, they have their legend size version of Cyclonus, who will be coming out soon. And from the looks of it, it actually comes with a little uh, Target Master kind of guy. I'm not sure if that's an actual transforming nightstick, but uh, it definitely looks a lot like nightstick and gun mode, not like the uh, regular. 1986 Cyclonus' pistol. DX9's also shown off what appear to be near-finished images of their Trigger figure, who's their version of Astro Train. This one's not a Legends figure, he's more like uh, ultra-sized, if I remember correctly. Iron Factory showed off some uh, color uh, images of their Armed Intelligence Squad. This is a set of legend-sized IDW uh, blaster and a ram horn and steel jaw figure that transform into little tanks or combine into a uh, chair for blaster to sit in. As you can see here, the uh, alternate mode for blaster is based on his Cybertronian mode in the IDW comic Spotlight Blaster. And here you can see what the uh, in-package images of it look like. So it looks like it's pretty much ready to go. Iron Factory also showed off their Iron Giant's Maiden figure. This is a legend-sized version of Wing Blade. As you can see here, it comes with a little sword. And she's looking very uh, anime model-ish. JSI showed off the test shots in uh, pink-colored plastic of the replacement armor they made for the Fans Project's uh, Revolver Core and all the other uh, figures that use that mold. Uh, as you can see, it turns into a little standalone robot, which uh, has lots of weapons. Or you can combine it onto Revolver Core, Rift Shot Core, or Recoiler Core to replace the armor that the Fans Project people kind of skimped on and only gave you enough parts to make one armor between the three figures. As you can see in the uh, vehicle mode, it has some uh, extra bonus items like the uh, big cow catchers on the front. And uh, this will look even better once it matches the color of the figures. I wonder if they'll be releasing it in different colors to match the different figures, or will they only get one release for the three? Uh, this is uh, the box image we've seen lately of a oversized uh, Masterpiece Grimlock uh, meant to scale within show accuracy to the MP10 Optimus Prime, because the uh, regular Masterpiece Grimlock is actually kind of short, 
and ends up he actually has a name. It's actually going to be Grimlock. He's going to be Reximus Prime, and he's 29 and a half centimeters tall. Mastermind Creations has been showing off what appear to be finished product images of their Fila Saber figure. Fila Saber is their version of the Generation 1 Pretender Catilla. Uh, this one's no longer a Pretender. He's a combiner with their Not Predacons line. In fact, it's a uh, remold of their not version of Not Rampage. But it does come with a very cool helmet accessory. It looks like the helmet on the combined form of the uh, old G1 Pretender, which is kind of neat. I kind of like to see the uh, Pretenders get uh, homages here and there, and I'd get this one if I was to get any of them just because he's a cool standalone figure. I don't need him to be the arm of a combiner. Uh, it is. It would be nice to see uh, an actual shell or something, but uh, this is one way to do it. Planet X made a little teaser lately that after they finished the uh, uh, Fall of Cybertron Dinobots, they're actually going to go back and do a real uh, Voyager-sized Fall of Cybertron Grimlock figure that doesn't cheese out on the uh, cheapiness the way Hasbro has been doing so much of lately. So this will actually be a good version of Fall of Cybertron Grimlock if uh, Planet X's history has, tells us anything. Play With This 2 showed off numerous uh, art images of their upcoming figures for their crowdfunding project. Uh, these are actually the color guides for the art so that uh, when they're painting the figures up they know exactly what they uh, what color should go where. For instance this character is Bite Mark who will be a crowdfunding exclusive and he's basically made out of pieces of Bloodbath and, and uh, Desolator but it's colored in unique colors and made up a uh, unique character. I'm told that this character is some type of vampire. So, should be kind of neat. And it will be a six inch tall articulated figure that comes with a tech drone that turns into weapons and a backpack and a uh, shield. Here is the another crowdfunding exclusive named Flare Strike. Flare Strike, of course, is the basic body design very similar to G1 Pretender Starscream, but they've painted it in a color that uh, is very reminiscent to Generation 1 Sunstorm, making up a new character, sort of Pretender Sunstorm. And this will be a member of the Strikers team, I'm told. And, you know, some of the cool things they did is they uh, kind of made the wings a little bit bigger, they added the dual, uh, you know, seeker type guns to the arms and made it a little bit more uh, impressive in the uh, in the uh, pretender robot mode than the original G1 was. I kind of like it. Also, this character named uh, the Mighty Musculies, who's uh, actually made out of mostly reused parts. I think the only things uh, new on it are the head and the sash and then the paint color. Everything else is taken from another figure that Play With This 2 already released, or is already introduced to us. But uh, they've put it together in such a way that they've made a really nice standalone figure out of it. And uh, he will be a character in the Play With This 2 fiction, and he will be a crowdfunding exclusive. Although I have to wonder if maybe we'll get some variants of him in the future that are different, uh, because I can't see the people not wanting lots of this guy. He'll be very popular. Also, we got uh, artwork of this character named Rebuke, who is a tech drone for a figure we have not seen yet. We're told that we will be seeing him at the crowdfunding, whatever figure this goes to. The model of it is the same uh, design as the tech drone for uh, Jet Strike. They're not Starscream. So I have to ma imagine it would probably be some other... Uh, Striker character, or you know, some sort of Starscream recolor, would be the larger robot that goes with this. But who will it be? Uh, the actual uh, tech drone seems to be colored to look a lot like uh, Generation One Dreadwind, and I'm curious if we're going to end up getting a Darkwing as well, and maybe they could combine in jet mode. I'd be doing it just for fun, and they uh, are five millimeter port 
uh, assembled robots, so I'm imagining you could assemble these uh, two, three, or four and make just one giant robot or one giant vehicle out of them, so you could kind of get that, uh, that uh, G1 combination gimmick out of them if you really try. Also, we have here some artwork for Decay, who is a tech drone for one of their uh, characters. I'm told he goes with uh, Bite Mark. Uh, some news out of the uh, Play With This 2 fund, uh, crowdfunding is that this exclusive blue-colored BMOG set of a Baron Manta will be available in very limited numbers at their crowdfunding and only available to people who get in on the all-in early on. So you might want to get in on that early if you're going to. I don't know how much that's going to be. I imagine it won't be cheap, so save up your money, but it'll be the only way to get a hold of a extremely exclusive blue bear and manta. Uh, we saw this art come out of Play With This 2 recently. This is an unused uh, recolor concept they were calling Blood Soaked, but uh, we're not, we don't know if they're going to actually release a figure in these colors yet. Some headshot news uh, coming out of Play With This 2. These are sets of heads that will either go on their figures or other compatible type figures that come out. I'm told the Master of the Universe Classic and some of the Marvel Legends or Star Wars Black figures have a very similar ball joint so that you could end up putting these on those figures. But uh, here we have Bricks and Stone, which is actually the same head just turned upside down. and It will have a ball joint on either side of it so you can uh, put it either way up. I'm told this figure is kind of inspired by figures like Chris Star and Power Lords. We also have Sheriff Wormwood, who is a skull head that will have a removable hat, and Captain Barrows, who is a dinosaur head, I'm told is somewhat inspired by Dino Riders and Dino Saucers, and these are all heads designed by Trent Troop. So hopefully we'll be getting bodies for these characters somewhere during the crowdfunding or figuring out what heads, what bodies to put them on during the, uh, during the uh, crowdfunding by looking at what they show as examples. So I'd like to see what they go with. Um, also, we got Headshots Volume 7 by Candace uh, Santora with uh, Nug, Lurk, and Deadwood. Nug is a stone man. Uh, Lurk seems to be a robotic mantis. And Deadwood is a dead tree stump man. So, well, we'll see what kind of bodies these can go with. I wonder if you can uh, end up putting this with, uh, I don't know, Groot or something. Just pick a Marvel plant man body. Or uh, maybe something out of Masters of the Universe. Uh, one of the cool things that's going to be coming out of play with this too is also they have a series of Supremacy Scepters. Uh, these are basically staffs that uh, have a ball joint on the end. And you can have them just by be standalone because the ball joint does have a little bit of a deco on it. But also you can use it to mount your extra heads and make a little head staff. And this could be some great uh, action similar to anything from uh, Visionaries to any other line that uh, characters carried staffs. Uh, the one over there looks like it could be kind of... Uh, either a medical or a snake man staff. So it's cool add-ons and these will be a little, a little extra you can get during the crowdfunding. Also, Play With The Two showed off a little bit about how their body parts can be mixed and matched. I'm not really interested in making a mix-up figure out of these figures, maybe you guys are, uh, but I would be interested in customizing figures that look good together. So this is kind of cool that you can do this with this and I would paint them so they'd actually match <laughs> or try to get parts that match up together but uh, you can mix and match uh, this that and the other thing to make a uh, cool figure when you're done you know what they really should do is release uh, all these little pictures in a uh, either in a art uh, set or in a little flash game and you can just assemble your own figure and then paint them how you want and then print them out or submit them online to be kind of cool to make but I'm sure they're busy making all, doing all the stuff for the Kickstarter. Maybe some fan would like to put that together. Uh, we did get some uh, renders for what's going to soon be the finalized version of Desolator. 
Uh, here we see the torso arm and some arm armor colored in uh, the body colors for Desolator. And here we have him with uh, missing some chest armor, but lots of detail. You can see there's uh, five millimeter ports in the shoulder pads and the back. And here we have a fully armored, fully colored uh, version of Desolator, which I'm told they're going off to get the 3D printing done now. So hopefully we'll be seeing that soon. Unique Toys showed off a uh, new figure. This is like about ultra size, I'm told. And it's their version of Octane. And he is a triple changer. You can see there's a little bit of a truck and jet uh, kibble off his back. But darn it, he's a triple changer. He's allowed to have a little bit of uh, vehicle stuff on him. As long as he looks good in both modes. And you know what? This jet mode, not that bad. And truck mode, not that bad. So I'm kind of impressed that they did such a good job with the two alt modes. A uh, little uh, bonus item I found online recently. A Chinese brick company called Zippo was able to release a set of transforming robot thingy guys here. This one's called Giant. And it's obviously inspired by Optimus Prime. We also have Hunter the Robot. Looks kind of like Starscream. And a cool set of Combiner Age of Extinction Dinobots. With Slash, Contempt, Boomerang, Wire Rope, and Steel Slag. Also, X-Transbots showed off the first renders of their upcoming... Uh, Beachcomber inspired figure, which is looking pretty good if you ask me. The name of the figure is Arcos, which I'm told is a type of rock. Little update since my last episode. You may have noticed I skipped a week, and that was because I had one heck of a week last weekend. My car ended up breaking down. I ended up spending the week having it towed, having it looked at, finding out it was unfixable, and then having to go out and shop for a new car. So that kind of kept my weekend busy. Uh, but all is well, other than having a new car payment. I have a really nice new car, so that's cool. And anyone who wants to help, I will be listing a lot of uh, old toys on eBay, so you might get a chance to get some good stuff uh, at a reasonable price if you follow that. Uh, also, I'm happy to announce that during the uh, week that I missed, uh, my YouTube channel has hit 2.5 million views since I started it. And this is actually my second YouTube channel. My first one got shut down because I posted commercials for Revenge of the Fallen on it. I don't know what the heck that was all about. But even on this new channel, I've posted 2.5 million views. So thanks very much for everyone following and watching my shows. All right, we've had some feedback on my last episode. Tyler Hurd posted that He's glad to see the completed version of the Prometheus slash Defense Horror figure. He just still needs the Verta Aid slash Blades, and he thinks it's odd that the windows on the figure are blue instead of black. Haida Aterasa says that my show helps disseminate between the myriad of developers of otherwise essentially the same character, and the season has been terrible with all the Dinobot clones. He understands why all third-party short production runs expenses uh, per piece are astronomical, but wishes that using the secondary market to price gauges, they would put high-demand products back into production um, just so they don't get too expensive from scalping and eBay. Well, I understand that, and there are some figures that I would get if they were cheaper, but I missed out on them when they were new, and now they're super expensive. Uh, Dinobot Maximize says the Walrus with the Cyber Monocle could be Longtooth, a Autobot Pretender, same class as Doubleheader and Pincher. That's correct. That could be Longtooth. I'm also told it could be somebody else. Edogs2111 says any word on the oversized version of the Stunticons? No, there has been no word yet. And honestly, I don't know if they're actually going to make the Combiner or if that was just stealing art from the uh, from fans project when they put it on the box because the uh, the pictures on the box were all of the fans project toys not of the knockoff so the knockoff oversized versions might not even exist Stormwriter X 
writes that that is one sweet dino tank. And also he agrees that the hollow parts on the Hasbro Takara figures are looking cheap. Uh, he's very glad that the third party companies are not going that route. Some third party companies really give you the bang for your buck. Compare the fans toys Soar and Scoria against MP Grimlock. And I think fans toys comes out on top as a better value. Uh, if you consider the amount of die cast joints, quality, posability, amount of detail, engineering, and accessories. He also asks, uh, which uh, third-party toys do you consider to be a great value uh, for the price, and which third-party toys do you consider a terrible value? So I'm going to ask everyone here, which toys do you think are great values, and which ones are terrible values? Let me know, and uh, I'll mention it in the next show. This week's screen capture is of the 1920 section of the Carousel of Progress ride at Disneyland. One of my favorite rides, and I'd recommend going. There's never a big lineup, and it's always fun. And remember, it's a great big beautiful tomorrow. This week's news brought to you from the pages of tformers.com and TFW2005. News read by Matthew Ignash. Stop by wikialpha.org to read more about third-party Transformers. Check out the Facebook page of the third-party TF Crashers. And then come on by the Retro Robot Radio YouTube channel and subscribe.